Is it consistent with veganism to bring children into the world? Can it be rationally defended? To find out, we first need to agree on a definition of what it means to be a vegan. According to the Vegan Society, veganism is a way of living that seeks to exclude, as far as possible and practicable, all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing, and any other purpose. Now, I ask you to imagine a person, reminiscent of Harvey Dent, perhaps, who always uses a dice, which he will roll in order to decide what he is going to use or consume in a specific situation. Imagine that the number one on the dice is an animal product, and every other number is a plant-based choice. Unless this person can somehow trick the dice into never falling on the number one, this person cannot be considered a vegan because Locke is involved in the outcome of his choices. It may favor plant-based choices, but Locke has it that once in a while, usage of an animal product will be the outcome. Of course, this means that the risk was not minimized as much as possible. In this instance, it's very easy for everyone to see that this dice roller cannot possibly be a vegan. And in theory, no matter how many numbers the dice has, if there is only one of them that represents an animal product, its user cannot possibly be a vegan. And herein lies the problem of procreation for vegans. It is an indisputable fact that, once we procreate, we don't have control over the outcome, over what the offspring will become. We are, in essence, rolling dice. If there is an outcome that results in the offspring not being a lifelong vegan, then we, just like in the previous scenario, didn't minimize the risks as much as possible and practicable. It is true that our consciousness, our set of values and our moral compass, these things do not transfer to the new being that we are bringing into the world. If best intentions and parental conditioning were all that was needed for a child to be guaranteed to inherit these values permanently, parents wouldn't be devastated when they find out that their child has committed horrible acts like they have been part of a school shooting or a terrorist attack, to name only a couple of extreme outcomes. These things would simply not occur because who intends their children to commit such acts? Not a great number of people, certainly. And no one ever wanted their children to end up dead or imprisoned after having committed such crimes. Hope, conditioning, and best intentions therefore aren't enough to justify the act of procreation. There can always be the outcome of a child growing up to choose differently or rebel against his parents' values, which we know to be very common. By creating a child, we create a scenario where one more person can potentially support animal exploitation and cruelty, thereby undermining or undoing our own efforts. Now, in such a situation, perhaps a vegan parent would say, I had no control over this. But this last attempt for defense crumbles with a little bit of analysis just because at that point it is another person's choices does not absolve us from responsibility since it was our own choice to procreate we initiated this outcome it could not have taken place without our decision and our action which was not that hard to imagine to begin with lastly the fact that we cannot know for certain that our offspring will be a lifelong vegan makes a strong enough case for procreation to be an antagonist to veganism. But there is also the argument for the fact that the offspring itself may very well be the victim of such exploitation and cruelty during his or her lifetime. If a vegan's compassion extends to human animals, which of course it logically should, then it only follows that vegans ought to leave the unborn in their blissful repose of nothingness to borrow Arthur Schopenhauer's words. After all, 
Non-vegans often use the argument that cows and pigs and chickens wouldn't exist anymore without us, as if their survival as a species mattered more than their feelings, as an excuse for our need to exploit and torment them. And vegans rightfully see this argument for the farce that it is. Why would it be any different for humans?